How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? OB with a TMQ. Xbox One is OB with 89. PSN is OB with 89. Twitch is OB with 89. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook is with TV. I just want to start off by saying thanks for everybody subscribing to my channel. I hope I'll be informative to you guys. Hope I give you all the information that you need and understand. Um, I really, really, really appreciate you guys. I really do. Um, can't do nothing without y'all guys. I'm excited to give you information. Um, I know guys excited about the season starting. <laughs> well, it's not starting, but, you know, it's going to be starting. Uh, hopefully, you know, we missed out the preseason, but it is what it is. We still get a regular season. You know, the first week we got the Cardinals and Mr. D. Hop over there and Mr. Simmons on the defense from Clemson. Um, I look at that I look at that matchup right there. A lot of, you know, Cardinals pretty good. I'm just keep it, I'm gonna keep it 100. Cardinals is a pretty good team. They're a well coached team. I mean, uh, the coach was first year, I think last year. He did a, a good job, to be honest. He did real good. Um, I mean, he got some flaws in there. Now, me personally, I don't think they can hold the game. Uh, they can't control the game. That's the biggest thing that they can't do to me. It's my opinion. Um, but I had a conversation, you know, with a couple of people talking about D Hop being the best receiver. And I, I mentioned when we scrimmaged them when we were playing for the Houston Texans, Ward locked them up. I give you five yards, three yards, I give you that. Man. But I don't see us going to the season losing that game. But that's here no there. Let me get to the bigger thing. Uh, we signed John Lynch to a five-year contract extension. So he good through 2024. Uh, we signed John Lynch. I mean, sorry, we signed Kyle Shanahan. That's pretty good. We got the whole Raheem Moser scenario over with. He's happy. We're happy. We fixed the contract. That's good. Um, we got Jimmy Garoppolo in good spirits. He's looking good on the field already. You already know we worked out with KB and all the, the young boys. That's good. It's it good to get to see the rookies in their uniforms. Um, we also got a, a, a number change on, on her. He's from number 17 to 14 now. He gave number 17 to Calvin Benjamin. So it's a lot of moves around. I mean, that's fun. So you already know that we are already willing to help each other out. Um, I know we still got Kittle on the contract. I was reading something on the 49er web zone saying um, Mike Sybil went on the NFL Network today and reported that George Kittle and the 49er front office are at a significant disconnect. And potentially George Kittle uh, will opt out of 2020 season. Now I don't really know the truth behind that, how true it is, um, but I hope it's not true. And I keep saying um, opt out, opt out all over the internet. And like I said, I hope that that's not the scenario. It could be another situation where it could be a um, Raheem Moses scenario. Just want to get paid, and it's totally understandable. Totally understandable. And I also seen some speaking on. We reached out to the clowny. I don't know the truth behind that neither, but you know I want to do a little bit more research on that because, hey, God, good. I wouldn't mind him on my line. Yeah, we already got uh, Bosa, Ford, Armstead. And like I said, Ken Law, we we gotta see who he is his first year. Pretty sure he's gonna be a monster. But put Clowney in that mix, <laughs> game over. You know what I'm saying? Just like Seattle making moves, they trying to get better. They went and got uh, Jamal Adams. I know I'm late on this, but they got Jamal Adams. We need to start making splash moves like that. I mean, we got guys that we can rely on. Yes, we do, but we still need to make splash plays, big splash plays. Like we lost Emmanuel Sanders. I think that was a significant loss, a huge loss for our receiving core. Uh, we got young receivers. We got real young receivers that, you know, he. I mean, he helped them out, put them under his wing, got them mindsets going. It's like Debo. Even though he's hurt, but he will be back. But we need somebody to replace him while he's gone. Like, who's that next receiver that's able to step up? 
and put themselves in a situ- situation where they could be potentially a superstar. This could be young Brandon coming in. Rocker number 11. Could be him. Uh, as we look, I looked at his workouts. He got the hands. He got the speed. He got the route running ability. But can he be that next X factor? As a Debo proving himself. Proving himself. And I like the way he play. Play hard. Play upfield. Wide receiver playing running back. It's great. But we need somebody to replace him for right now. And like I said, we got Trent Taylor. I talk about Trent Taylor a lot because I like that receiver. I like that slot receiver. Remind me of Wes Welcome and Element and all of them. Um, Jalen Hurd, he didn't get to play last year. I talk about them the most because, like, those are most, those are two receivers that I got most faith in. There's no discredit to anybody else, but those are the guys that I feel that's going to be on problem, especially Hurd, because the size he had and how powerful he played. Played running back, so he could run the ball. He got field vision. So, uh, like I said, I would love to see them guys play and get in the game. Um, but, yeah, the whole um, – The whole um, clowning thing. I really want to see. I really want to see how true that is. Like I said, I would love to have Clowny on my team, and it'd be a good move. Like I said, we gotta make that splash. We gotta make a splash because, all, like I said, all these teams are making moves to get better. It's like Cardinals getting um, Cardinals getting D uh, D Hop. And I was so mad at that because it was a shock. But it is what it is. But, yeah, it says 49ers is interested in Clowney, Jadavion Clowney. Uh, went to the website, uh, si.com. Um, they speaking on the 49ers reported. One second. The 49ers reporter have recently expressed interest in signing free agent pass rusher Jadavion Clowney, according to the pick Um Who cites a source? This reports also nothing about it. Blase, the 49ers merely were testing the waters, they say. <laughs> I have no idea who Pick6.com is or if it's this report is legit, but freaking love the idea of the 49ers signing Clowney. Uh, I tweeted in February that the 49ers should re-sign D4 with Buckner, let Armstead leave and sign Clowney. Instead, they let Buckner leave and sign Armstead, who's cheaper than Buckner. That's how, that's how everything works. <laughs> So, theoretically, the 49ers have even more money than they can use to sign Clowney. So, let's read on this. It says, when motive, when motivated and healthy, Clowney is as good as the 49ers defensive line. He was the number one pick in 2014 draft, and about once a month he shows why. Last season when he played for the Seattle Seahawks, he almost singly handedly beat the 49ers Levi Stadium. He was on fire that game. I will give it to him. He is without caution the best player on the field for either team. Hmm, okay, I can go with that. And said the 49ers is part two. The 49ers directly can keep Clowney motivated and healthy in. Cause we have that. They can sign him to a one-year deal, which would keep him motivated because he would be playing for a contract. And they can keep him healthy by using him in rotation in the pass rush. Like I said, we got great depth at that position. The 49ers have salary cap space to sign Clowney. They currently have more than $12.1 million in cap space, according to over the cap.com and they can create an additional 4.8 mil in cap space by cutting guard Tom Compton and running back Tevin Coleman which I do not agree with cutting Tevin Coleman they say who are replaceable Compton may be replaceable Tevin Coleman we need that's my guy so I'm not agreeing 100% on that one so <laughs> meaning the 49ers can afford clown to a one year deal almost 17 mil if they want to like I said we still got to sign Kittle also. 49ers currently don't want the Seahawks to sign Clowney. No, we don't. 
but they just like I said, they made that big jump to get Jamal Adams. So, uh, how much money do they really have? Like I just said, the Seahawks just closed the gap between themselves and 49ers in 2020 by trading for all pro say Jamal Adams. If they start with sign Clowney to that, they might win the NFC West. I don't agree with that. Clowney would make the 49ers pass with the best in the NFL. I could agree with that because we got Clowney, Nick Bosa would be the starting defensive ends, rookie Javon J- uh, Clowney. Sorry, look. All these Javavians and all that, Javon Kinlaw. Will play nose tackle. Armor S. Eric Armstead will move over to DeForest Buckner's old position. Hmm, three technique. That's pretty smooth. And one pass was down. Clown uh, Ken Law will go to the bench. D4 will replace him on the field. And the 49ers could use one defensive tackle and three defensive ends because four Bosa Clowney all have experience rushing from the interior. Hey, that sounds pretty good, though. Armstead, Ford, Bosa, and Clowney would be the best of the four pass rushers in the NFL, and Clowney would, wouldn't would affect the 49ers cap space long term. He'd be one-year rental. Sign the guy, win the freaking Super Bowl next season, going all in. Okay, after reading all that, like I said, I don't agree with letting go Coleman. That's my guy. He, he runs a rock when healthy. It's good. I know we have Mostert. Uh, McKinnon is coming back, but Coleman is to me my starter. Moster is my is my punch, my quick pop 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 punch. Coleman is my well, Coleman's a quick punch to me. Coleman's a quick punch. Most is the home run. McKinnon, we will find out what he really is all about once he gets to the field. So reading all that, eh, I like that move. I like that move. I would love to have Clowney. Let me know what you think about getting Clowney signed to the 49. Is it a, a reasonable move? Is it a smart move? I mean, hey, if we get him, the pass rush would be electrifying, man. Like, the defense would be crazy. And we got an opportunity to win the Super Bowl. Defense win championships. So, if we can make that happen and put him in a position like that, man, we'd be good. Because a lot of teams we play, most of these quarterbacks now is just – Scramblers like your Lamar Jackson puts your pressures on your P. Holmes would be good too. Your Russell Wilsons and your Kyler Murray's, all these people that we can really fold in with a great pass rush. And we got great corners, we got good secondary, we got great linebackers, so it make everybody's job easier if we could take the front away from them. Take that front line away. They can't run the ball. You know? So I would love to see that. I'm 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 love to see that. If George Kittle could really be like, hey, look, uh, I sacrificed my money this year for the sake of the team to win the Super Bowl, or you know, like I said, he gonna get paid either way it goes. This year, or next year, he's gonna get paid. We will not let George Kittle go. We will keep him satisfied. That's just I'm just be honest. That's the best player we got on offense. You know, I'm looking at the hundred uh, hundred players. I don't agree with all that, but he's number seven. That's our best player. That's our best player. So getting clowning would be good, though, man. It's real good. We have three stars on the line, a potential fourth, and um, Ken Law. Eric Ormstead still got some work behind him, but we have three potential stars on the line, superstars, X Factor. So, I mean, hey. It's too much. It's too much on that line, and now they be forced to put in extra protection. And putting extra protection does what? Take away your receivers. So, hey, it's not a bad idea. So, now they're speaking on clowning. We also made some roster moves. The San Francisco were announced, announced on Sunday they have resigned uh, D line Alex Barrett. Barrett is six two, two hundred fifty. Was originally signed to the 49ers practice squad on November 27, 27, 2019, where he spent the remainder of his season. He resigned with the San Francisco 49ers February 10, 2020, and was later waived on July 30th. Uh, 26 year old native uh, Massa, Arizona, Barry attended San Diego State University, where he appeared in 50 games, 38 stars, and uh, was 169 tackles, 19 sacks, 8 pass defensive. Defense, three forced fumbles and two interceptions. Um, 
So that's one little roster move we made. Um, speaking on that, is there any more roster moves that we've made? I'm um, getting information from 49ers.com. Um, uh, morning report roster moves backfield. Um, see what else we uh, like. I said they waived uh, D line Alex Barrett. The following players have also been released: O line Leonard Wester. Following Perry has been placed on reserve slash COVID nineteen list. Running back Jeff Wilson Jr. The new reserve slash COVID-19 list has been created for players who either tested positive for COVID-19 or has been quarantined after having been in close contact with infected person or persons. If a player fails, falls into either of these categories, his club is required to immediately place them in reserve COVID-19 list. Oh, wow. I didn't know what that stuff was. <laughs> hey, good information right there. So I just want to give you guys a little, you know, information on that about the roster moves. I got one question I want to ask you guys with multiple questions I asked. Top 100 players in 2020. George Kittle, 7, Bosa, 17, Richard Sherman, 28, 43rd, Jimmy Rockman, 70th, Fred Warner. Uh, me personally, I think this list, they messed up on some stuff. Like I said, you could put uh, Aaron Donald at number three, but keep. Nick Bosa at 17, which Nick Bosa had clearly had a better season. Kittle had a better season than them also. I know it's two different positions, but he ranked him at number seven. But you put Russell at number two, but put Patrick Holmes at number four. I'm cool with Lamar being number one, but eh. <laughs> now tell me what y'all think about that that list too. Uh, some more information on that. How, how y'all feel about that list? Me, I think it was BS. Um, a lot of the players got played. Like Fred Warner, number 70. Uh, it's, you know, it was just random thought when I was scrolling through the internet. That was a random thought. But let me know what y'all think about that. So we got a little bit of good news. We signed Jordan Reed, um, as it says on NinersNation.com. The San Francisco 49ers signed former Washington tight end Jordan Reed. Uh, Reed reached agreement on an incentive laden, which means he could earn kind of perks and things like that throughout his contract, meeting certain requirements. Reed is a 30-year-old, has a history of concussions, but when he's healthy, Reed was on was one of the most electric tight ends in football. Reed is familiar with the 49ers playbook, having to play under Shanahan, so you know that's a good thing. You know, he already kind of know the system. Should help with the learning curves as camps opens. Uh, Reed has to prove that he can stay healthy, but he provides another weapon for Jimmy Garoppolo, which is true. You know, we got Kittle, now we have Reed. We also could throw huge check in tight end positions too, so it all works out. And this allows San Francisco to lean on experienced weapons as opposed to young, I mean, to the youth at the receiver. Running more 12, 2, and 13 personnel won't take away from the 49 explosive plays, but will also protect Jimmy G. That it will protect. This could also be a sign of how the team feels about Ross Dwelly. Uh, I mean, he, mm, I mean, he showed up. Uh, I don't want to take anything from him. I mean, he's a good tight end, but, you know, you can't pass up on a veteran tight end as a Jordan Reed because he was a very good tight end. Uh, matter of fact, let me see his stats. Let me see what his stats. Uh, 2018, I was injury for around that time. 54 reception, 558 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, but 2015, it's a healthy Reed. 86 receptions, 952 yards, 32 long, and 11 touchdowns. Uh, 2016, 66 receptions, 668 yards, 686 yards, I apologize, as long as 33 and 6 touchdowns. I mean, for a career, yeah, uh, 3,371 and, uh, and 24 touchdowns. I mean, that's pretty good for a tight end and really playing on, uh, you know, he ain't really have a quarterback. <laughs> so if you got a team that can, you know, put the ball in, we also have a team that can run the ball. So that will open up a lot for him. But can he be that blocker? You know, can he help 
protect Jimmy G because we're going to give him the ball. And I think that he's one of those, you know, better tight ends. And I'm kind of glad that we got somebody that filled in that role. So it's, it's good to see the splash that we made. It's not a big splash, but it it's could be potentially a big splash because it can help with the run game as well as the passing game. So he already played under Shanahan. So we already know that he can kind of, you know, even though Kittle already on his own lane, but them two complement each other. That'd be good. Put use checks in the mix. I said use checks. <laughs> use check in the mix. So it makes it makes for a good offense. It makes for a good offensive line also. Probably throw him at fullback also. Because I know at one point we were talking about turning Hurd into a tight end. So that's probably saying that, hey, Hurd, uh, we don't need you at tight end. We pick one up. You stay at receiver. So, I mean, I think it's a good move. Um, I'm going to sign for one year. One million dollar contract, like I said, that incentive uh, situation. He earned his perks by showing that he's capable of doing X, Y, and Z. So it looks good. Uh, I like it. You know, so let me know what y'all feel about this Joy Reed signing and potential clowny signing in the future. But I'm not a fan of letting Coleman go, so I don't want to hear none of that. <laughs> but let me know how y'all feel about that. Um, I'm going to make sure I try, like I said, drop videos every Monday till the season start. Because, uh, you know, you got to wait to get more information and see what's going on around in the league and all that stuff. So I get myself a week, work on the video on Sunday and drop it on Monday. So that's what I'm going to continue trying to do. So let me know how you guys uh liking the video because I'm trying to do something new. Uh, I want to be more informed before I come up here and speak. I want to let you know everything is kind of current. I want to keep that going. You know, I don't want to be behind. Like I said, this is one of the newer videos that I'm trying to work differently in. So just let me know what you guys think. And I want to say thank you for listening, watching, sharing, commenting, because I love your comments because it helps me with the next video. Something to talk about. So continue giving me feedback so I can work on my, my video. So like I said, share, comment, all of the above. Sorry, that's my computer going off. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, you already know it's OB with it, with TV Team Q the second half of that. Shout out Mike Wit. Make sure y'all go check his channel out also. Uh, but yeah, man, I appreciate y'all. I'm glad y'all stuck around this long to even pay attention to me. Make sure, like I said, share the video, comment, like, and the biggest thing, subscribe. Because I truly appreciate you guys. I really, 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 really appreciate you guys. Subscribe. Appreciate it. Good night, good morning, good evening, where y'all at? Thank you.